Aloha, my Facebook Ohana D here, uh, coming to you guys this evening, and I thank all of you guys for your prayers, for all of you that have directed prayers and and healing and light towards uh, my the high pulley earlier, and I continue to hold that family in my prayers. Um, I thank you all in advance. I thank you all for your prayers and your love and your light. Um, the matter concerning this post is is to do with um, the kuleana of of learning or getting into any type of specific spiritual practice. The, the kuleana is like the responsibility or the or the the knowing having the basic foundation of knowing the responsibility behind of getting into any spiritual practice. And this is regardless of your background, regardless of your belief system, regardless of whatever you whatever spiritual practice you wish to go into, or whether it be um, uh, your, your native bloodline practices, or, or any, even, even, even a religious practice has its, has its kuli on its responsibility, and it's also is dangerous. Okay? Now, um, the reason why I'm posting this is because I'm seeing, hi, good evening, aloha, thank you, mahalo nui. Uh, the reason why I'm posting this is because there, aloha, brother Leah, aloha. How's it, guys? The reason why I'm posting this is because there is a lot of uh, kids in this younger generation, younger people, that may be seeing movies or maybe seeing, uh, you know, TV programs or, or pictures or movies about people that have spiritual gifts and abilities, and they think that it's cool and fun, you know. And so they are exploring alternative spirituality, spiritual practices, which is not necessarily bad, you know, because you seek, you knock, you look, you search, you find. But one thing that I cannot stress enough is that every spiritual practice has its basic fun fundamental foundation. And almost all of it is rooted in the most basic of it all. Basics of it of it all is usually to do with meditating, praying, pule. Um, also, shielding and grounding. These are the fundamental basics, and 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 the meditating and the praying. The meditating and the puli part is something that is... Uh, I eventually got to a point in my spiritual walking, in my spiritual practice, to where I, I, I am in a walking meditation, if you guys know what I mean. So even though I might not have time, all the t I might not have all the time to dedicate to sitting down 15 minutes or 20 minutes meditating, I'm actually in a walking meditation where I'm constantly talking, constantly communicating. So it's it's like living in a walking meditation, a waking meditation. Where you, Aloha, how's it? Hi, Lizzie. Um, good evening. Um, but a lot of this younger age generation, they think it's cool to just, you know, they see movies about witches or they see movies about wizards and they see movies about about people that have spiritual ability and, and they think that it's it's all fun and games. They don't understand that there is kuleana and great responsibility. And there's a lot of young people that are getting into various diverse spiritual practices and they're catching cracks. Okay? For instance, it's all fun and games. Oh, uh, that would be cool to have, to have you know, the ability to be on medium and to talk to people on the other side. Uh, most people didn't awaken, they have the gifts, they have those gifts. In the beginning, it was very scary, especially if they had no guidance. If they were blessed to raise, be raised in a family that, 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 has been doing this for generations that know, that can witness, that, that can identify the signs, the whole Ilona can say, okay, this one get the sight, you know what I mean? So all of a sudden, they start being more nurturing. If they're blessed and to be in an ohana that nurtures them, 
that to have tutus and kupunas that know what is the whole alone know what is the size, know what to do, how to counteract things when things come about, then it's good and fine. But to go from a place where you have no background in this, literally go to a bookstore, go get on a book and start practicing. Be careful. Be careful. You have to take everything into pulley. Everything you take into prayers. And, and, and I cannot stress the importance of prayer. And, and, and like I told this one family that, I'm, that I've been working with, because they've been going through some really heavy spiritual stuff, I told them, basically what I'm telling you is, it, this, is this requires a lifestyle change. This requires a lifestyle change. You heard, you heard the saying, from this day forward, okay, go and sin no more. Now, you know the strictness of certain religious practices or religious dogmatic practices, the, 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 the real strictness of it. Do you know that every practice has its place for certain people? Because some people will automatically understand, some people need to be, uh, pardon my saying, bitch slap into reality, knowing that you gotta wake up. Bro. This is a lifestyle change. This is a lifestyle change. And like I told you one family, do you pull it? Oh, oh no. Well, well, you better learn. You better start. And I said, there is no right or wrong way to pull it. You speak from your heart and you talk to God. I'm not going to get into telling you this. This is the right way or the wrong. No, no. You talk from your heart and when you pray to, to God. Okay? And it's a lifestyle change. But there's a lot of young people getting into spiritual practices that have no basic foundation. They're opening themselves up doing meditation. They're opening doors to other dimensions. Okay? Things coming true now. Things coming true. Some of these things are deceptive. Because like I told them, there's infinite dimensions. If you have no discernment, do not partake of the gifts if you have no discernment. Because it can be very dangerous. And when I say dangerous, I mean I mean like life and death dangerous. Like displacement of the soul out of your body and some other entity in your body, okay? Wreaking havoc. Hurting your ohana. Okay? Not only hurting you all, and, and no, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you guys this. I met plenty of skeptics. I met plenty of people that are skeptic. Unless you will experience these things, hold your peace. I've seen things and experienced things that I pray no one ever, 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 ever has to experience. And I cannot stress it enough with 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 this with the people that I do spiritual counseling with that. You have to have a basic foundation. You have to have a basic structure. And I said, if you don't get one, it's important that you believe in something than to believe in nothing and then have these things happen to you and then you have no foundation upon which to fall back on. Okay? Now in my spiritual walk, in my own spiritual walk, I've learned the necessity of prayer. And I tell you why I tell you why prayer is so important. Because prayer worry is a form of prayer, believe it or not. Even as, as weird as it sounds, when you worry, you're focusing on something you constantly, constantly. And I'm going to preface and I'm going to uh, cross reference for my spirit my religious ohana. There's a passage in the scriptures that says, To those who keep their eyes on the Lord, they shall not be visited by evil. You know basically, you know what's the gist of that, of that scripture? It's based on the law of attraction. What you focus on, focuses on you. What you look at, looks back at you. This is why, you know, you know, you know, yeah? plenty of people like even like that spooky stories on top of Facebook or Baki kind of stories. People like the ear itchy for hear all the kind of stories about, oh, yeah, when I'm going hunting, you know, they think it's all good and fun, yeah, 
But how come after they go read the story, after they get on Facebook, oh, they get Oka Kala, they got hard time sleep? Because the energy will transfer. Hello, Kia. The energy will transfer to. Because why? We live in a dimension made up of light and sound. And what does the internet, what does this, this computer, this screen transmit? Light and sound. What you don't understand is this box that you guys are looking at me through, energy can be sent through this to millions of people. Okay? So now, people like read, they hear itchy. They like read spooky stories. They like hearing this kind of stuff. Yeah? You know, we used to talk this kind of stuff nighttime. And my mother used to hear us. She used to cut the room. She's coming to the room. She says, you know what? Cut the crap. Don't talk about that stuff. That kind of stuff we talk about during the daytime. And, and you better see you pull it. And stop talking about that. Stop giving your energy to those things. All this kind of stuff got to stop people. You think it's all fun and games. Until these kind of things come hit your house. And then you got to go look for somebody for help you okay these things. You don't get things from other dimensions that is so powerful beyond anything of your wildest dreams that you can even imagine. And if people actually knew this, if they had the foresight to know this, they, they, they would really throw car... They would really... Be, be cautioned about and hesitant about getting into any spiritual practice. It's important that you have a foundation to fall back on. And I will not tell you what that foundation is. Because, because you have to seek, you have to search, you have to find. But it's important that you have some kind of basic foundation to fall back upon. Before you get into any spiritual practice. Yeah, meditation, meditation, praying, and I, and I, and I want to, getting back to prayers. Why I want to tell you that prayers is so powerful. And I think prayer is important. Because one thing, for one thing, pull is when you pray, you it's calming. It centers you. It settles the heart. It settles the mind. It puts you in a calm state. And when you're in a calm and centered state, you can be more focused. You are not distracted. So this is why prayers is important. And meditation is different from prayers because prayers is when you voice, when you put your voice out to the Creator, to the universe, when you're pulling. Meditation is sitting quietly, not saying anything, clearing your mind, and listening. Listening for the guidance. But, what are you going to give your ear to? Okay? Remember the scriptures I, the scripture I said, To those who keep their eyes focused on the Lord, they shall not be visited by evil. I'm going to share with you guys an experience that I had. One of my friends had Hanukkah experience in Gubarahim. And because he was hard here, two times this thing would happen. And I told him, don't let it happen the third time, brother. Because most people don't even survive the first time. Okay, because I told him you gotta make is a lifestyle change. You gotta pray. You gotta pull it. You gotta meditate. Because I told him, I see that you have these, uh, these certain abilities, but and the, and the fact that you cannot turn this thing off. So rather than resisting it, you need to learn how to. You need to fall into a spiritual meditative practice. Okay, and also about setting boundaries. Yeah, and calling upon God. But but I but I but I cannot I cannot I I I do not want to be the one to tell you what what you should do because because to everyone they have their own kuleana you know what I mean but I'm gonna share with you the best that I can of my own experiences so I told him you know and and I told him I said when I, and I saw this I I promise I, as God is my witness I saw before this was gonna happen to my friend. And I told him, I said, bro, you got to stop praying. And you know what his reply was to me? Oh, yeah, yeah, bum, bum, bye, bum, bye, later on. When the thing went hit him, it was so powerful, this thing. Yeah. That when turned his whole ohana upside down. And people don't realize that when you get into things, 
and, and the poor holy they call this uh, uh, psychosis or somebody has a psych, a psychiatric problems. You guys don't even know half of the people in the psych ward has nothing physically wrong with them. They say every time when I go to the, uh, a lot of the, 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 the institutions we get psych wards, I, I get my hair stand up on the back of my neck. Some of them are being spiritually oppressed. But because they have no foundation upon which to fall back on, it's hard. So, so like if I was to tell somebody that was being oppressed, that they have no foundation, do you pray? They're going to go, no. How do I give someone the value for prayer when they have no basic foundation? And it's not that I feel helpless because I, in myself I know what to do and I will, I will hold them in prayer. But even Yeshua, even Yeshua taught the disciples that when it comes to this kind of work concerning somebody being oppressed, you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta meditate and you gotta fast. And not only that, he talks about the person that is being oppressed by the demonic entities. Yeshua said, "If the person to whom you are praying for does not change their life, okay, it's a lifestyle change, and these entities are cleared from them." These entities will leave them, go into the wilderness, find ten more, and come back to these people. And these people will be ten times more worse. This is what I mean about having a basic foundation or some kind of basic spiritual structure to fall back on. And it is one lifestyle change. You cannot keep doing the same thing expecting different results. Okay? That's the definition of insanity. Doing the same things over and over and over, expecting different results. And then, and then, okay, blame, okay, blame the prayer person or the person that you can go to. Oh, I can go to you and then, but nothing will happen. Well, did you change? Do you believe? Have you stopped the things, the dark things that you've been doing that led you to make, making yourself vulnerable to which these dark things was drawn to you and wanted to inhabit you? Or are you still continuing? You, you, you remember the whole story of Mary Magdala? The believed to be, the story believed to be that she was a prostitute, right? And that the men were going to stone her in the Bible. And Yeshua... He interceded on her behalf. He stepped in while they were going to stone her. Okay? And as, as he stepped in and he was going to stone her, after he, he told her, I find no fault in thee. I find no sin and no fault in thee. But go and sin no more. When he said that go and sin no more, that means, girl, from this day forward, change your life. Because the eyes of Akua will be on you from this day forward. Turn over a new leaf. You know what I mean? You cannot live this, the life you was living previous to this intercession. And this is the this is the kuleana behind of any spiritual practice. It's important that you have a spiritual foundation to fall back upon. Because if you have no spiritual foundation to fall back upon, when these spiritual things happen, and it will happen, I'm telling you guys, going to sweep across the world. Whether you believe it or not. Because I am seeing atheist people, even unbelievers, that have no belief in these spiritual things, being affected by these things. And then, when we're stepping in to pull it for them, I, I feel the energy shift. I can see them shift. But something tells me they need to change. But then again, if they have no value for, for the things that I'm saying, I cannot make them see. And I cannot make, give them the value. They have to want it. They have to reach out for it. Okay? And this is why Yeshua said, this is why even Jesus said this. There was a city that he passed by, and the disciples said, Master, why are we not going into the city to do God's work? And you know what he said? I cannot go into the city. Not one person in that city believes in me. So even Yeshua knew that if the person doesn't believe, don't go there. Don't go there. And part of the unbelief is the ego. That's why he said, I come not, not for the righteous. I come for the sinners. They are the ones that know that they need help and they, their heart is open to the help. Okay? 
But not the but you, you also get the self righteous ones that think they know God until they get slammed. I know plenty of religious people out there that go to church, okay, and they think everything is hunky dory because they never experienced this kind of deep spiritual stuff. Okay? And I'm telling you, you experience this one time, change your life. And you're never gonna like go back. You experience this stuff one time and it will blow your mind. Your mind will be so blown. As God has made witness, your mind will be so blown. You're going to know, wait, this thing is real, bro. This is real stuff. But the thing about this, Ohana, is you don't need to wait for this kind of stuff come to your door. Start now. Pulley. Aloha. How's that? Shit there. Pulley. No wait for this kind of stuff. No wait to where the universe can throw you into a situation where you're going to have to do these things. When you don't need, you can do this now. Seek a relationship with the Creator. No wait. So that you have some kind of basic foundation upon which to fall back upon. You know, and for me, I call a core, I, I, I call upon the heavenly host. I call upon Father God Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, Yeshua Messiah. I talk with my tutus, I talk with my kupuna. With my angels. But I have angels that are not only the heavenly host. They also, I also have angels within my native Hawaiian culture. Beings of pure love and light that I have personally known as being loving beings of love and light. That is nothing but help people. It's important that you have some kind of, some kind of structure, some kind of belief system. Something that you can fall back on. Before you do any spiritual practice, remember the basic foundation. You need to pray. You need to ask for, for you need to do the clearing is the forgiveness. The mihi. Mihi is the clearing and the forgiveness. The puli is the puli goes in hand in hand with prayer. And the prayer and the meditation. It's important because that helps you to center yourself so that you can clear out all the days, whatever. Go into your spiritual practice, whatever it may be. Centered and in meditation and in prayer and calm, yes, and set the intention of pure love and light. And that if you connect, you only connect to things of the light and of love, nothing dark, only to the things of light and love. But what I mean, that, that's the dilemma that I've been experiencing lately. And for me, I see the energy clearing around people, these people that are in prayer for. I see the energy clear around them, but why I can hold the energy, I can hold this energy for them, yeah. But it's more meaningful if they have a value for it, if you can understand that. If they can have a value for it, like certain people ask them, You guys probably no. Well, then I then I will show them, I will show them one time you can make salt water. You put you pray with your ohana on top of them. You drink a little bit. You give your baby. You you anoint your child. You bless your baby. You pick up your holly inside, counterclockwise. Then you pick up your yard, okay. And then you you put the salt water by your front door or wherever you come in and out. Every time you go in and out, just like how when you go into the church, you touch the water, you anoint yourself, or you little bit inside your mouth, yeah. And then I will ask them again, did you pick up your house or your car wheeler? Or no? Power in it. That's what I mean about it being a lifestyle change. But I cannot give you the value for these things. You have to believe. You have to make this a practice. You have to live this. And you can do this now without relying or waiting upon the day when you're going to be hit with something so heavy that you're going to have to go look for somebody for help you. This is every person's kuleana. 
to step up to the plate and take care of your this is what the scriptures talk about being your salvation, your crown. Let no one take your crown from you. No wait, oh Hannah. If you have an opportunity to seek God out, go. If your Ohana invites you, come, come, come with me. We're going to have this gathering. Go, come. Go. Because God works in mysterious ways. God is infinite. And He works and He talks to us in mysterious ways. No wait. No wait till you got to go to somebody to help you clear. And then that person will tell you what you got to do. And then you don't make it a part of your practice because you have no value for it. Because, you know, you know... And then, you know what I mean? I can hold the energy and pull it. And I, and, and I saw this energy. And I'm going to tell you this. When the people come to my hall and we do a blessing on them, they clear. The energy, I can, it's not, I can feel them clear from them. Clear. But what happens when they leave my house is if they're going to continue, if they're going to stay. Like he said, if ye stay in me and I in you and we are one with the Father. Uh, God is always there, always willing. The heavenly host is always there, always willing to help you. God is always with us, but we are not always with Akua, with God. If you guys can understand that. And when I be from uh, getting caught up in the materialistic things or the ego, we can have all kind of excuses. But I'm telling you, when you and your honor get hit by something of this magnitude, of this spiritual magnitude, Nothing will matter. Not your job, not your car, not your lifestyle, not your money, because all those things could mean nothing. Okay? When you think you're losing your mind and you're being demonically oppressed, and then it happens in stages. First, it oppresses you, where the entity is around you. Okay? Then you start to see glimpses of it, like certain families started to see glimpses of it. There's one family we're working with uh, recently, in fact, in the last couple of days, has been uh, only this one girl been seeing hooves. She hear like hooves and she see fur. Then she felt this energy brush up, brush up against her. All the while getting Hawaii getting signs. And I said, girl, lifestyle change. I can, we, I can, we can clear this energy. And the thing, the thing looking calm around my heart, my heart, the thing looking calm around my heart, and you, you're gonna be fine here. But I'm gonna tell the story when you leave here. If you are living and, and continuing in, in me, in that teaching, if you continuing in that flow, but I cannot, I cannot make you, I cannot make you stay in, stay in this healing energy field. You gotta continue. Because I'm gonna tell you this. If I was to force my this, I mean, the energy the energy is powerful, can, but I would not cross that line. Because like the like the great teaching says, salvation is one by one. Every man must be accountable for his own, his own actions and his own thoughts, words and deeds. And that's what I mean about I cannot give you the value for what we're doing yet, because. You know what I mean? Like so, so in in working with the, we're working with different families, from different people from all different walks of life, different spiritual practices. When I know a little bit about them, then I know how to kind of adjust myself to what they're going through. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like you gotta step up to the plate. You gotta you gotta do your part. Even Yeshua never go there. Even 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 my elder brother Jesus never go there. He will avoid one whole city. Because there was unbelievers. People never believe in him. Because, check, check this out, the teaching was, when, when one of his disciples would ask Yeshua, what is the will of God? He said, the will of God is that you believe in the one whom he has sent. That was his exact words. That ye believe in the one whom he has sent. If you don't believe in the messenger, don't go there. Not going to work. Yeshua knew that. He knew that he couldn't go in that city and perform one miracle in that city. That's why he walked past the city. You guys understand though that there's a prerequisite to healing 
and to the manifestation of miracles is your belief in the one whom he has sent. If you know if and, and that's why that's why I like my, my tutu man, my great grandfather, um Sylvester Kilimilio Kamakai Moku Kepilino, he used to do La Okaya healing. The first thing he asked the person, you believe God can heal you. And you know, if they say no, oh I don't can help you. I sorry you gotta go. For real. He has a, do you believe God can heal you? There has to be some basic foundation upon which you can build and set the energy to. You know what I mean? Now get now check this out now. There is Kuliana with sending energy. I will never send energy, any type of healing energy or, or light to anybody without their permission. I won't cross that line ever. Because I'm gonna tell you the Kuliana of that. Anytime you send energy to somebody without their permission, against their will, against their free will, that's dark magic. You're crossing the thin line. You're crossing that fine line. I don't care how, how good you're under. I don't care how good your intentions. I don't care how good your intentions. Even if they be loving intentions. You can pray for some. I pray for people all the time. But I never consciously send energy. And it, which is which is similar to like Reiki energy, unless I have the permission, and then when I get the permission, they they'll give me the their they'll give me their uh, the address of where they are, and then I know exactly where to focus the energy, but I will not go there, and that's the kuleana. That's what people don't realize is that there's a kuleana with energy work, and I'm not just talking about praying. When I talk about sending energy, it's a whole other level of energy work. Praying, you can pray for anybody, anything. You can pray for the world and all that. But when you come time for sending energy to someone, you must always receive their permission and in agreement with them. It has to be in agreement. The, the receiver must be in agreement with the person sending, with the sender. And they're more powerful because when there is two or more gathered, agreeing upon any such thing, it is done. It is done. Okay? But now also, that person that is receiving, they must maintain this, this energetic state. Which means, remember, to those who keep their eyes focused on the Lord, they shall not be visited by evil. When A lot of times you will find that like, after we pray on somebody and the energy is clear from the person, I tell them, <clears throat> do not go back and think about it. And when, and when you will be tempted, the energy will come back to you. And you know, just say, get thee behind me, Satan. Okay, that's it. This is Yeshua knew Jesus went through the Yeshua, our elder brother, went through the same temptations as 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 us when he was up in the mountain meditating. That long time, almost one month, he was praying, he was fasting. Okay, when you don't eat for long periods of time, the human body get weak, the mind start to drift. Okay, the adversary came when test him, when tempt him. That was called the temptation of the Christ. And the thing came to him and went tempting with the word of God. How's that? Because my mother should tell me, there's two people that know everything. The man upstairs and the man downstairs. He said, and my mother should tell me, even the one downstairs, he know the law. Because in the end, he obeys, he obeys to the law. The, the, the dark one knows the law. He knows it in and out, upside down, all around. Every being, every entity in the universe know divine spiritual law. Okay? And this is why when Yeshua was weak after fasting for, for the, the long period of time, 30 days, almost, almost a month, he didn't fast. His mind started to go weak because the human body breaks down and becomes weak. And it is when the mind is weak when he was tempted. And the dark one came to him and quoted scripture to him. How's that? How's that? Told him. Why don't you throw yourself off this mountain? You're the son of God. You have power. Why don't you throw yourself off this mountain? For is it not written in the good book that the angels of the Lord will come and, and, and protect you, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone? So now, you're getting this Aiku Kai Pilau Kepolo quoting scripture to Yeshua. To the, to the Christ. And that was, that's what most people don't understand that he went through these temptations too. The same things we're facing is nothing new to the Christ. He went through it. Okay? Then, 
So the thing was testing him. Was trying to was trying to get him to use his divine powers. Okay? But Yeshua knew better. If it's not my father's will, I ain't gonna use them. Because then I'm gonna be doing my own righteousness. Okay? You guys understand that? The devil told him, Why don't you throw yourself off this cliff? Is it not written in the good book? That the angels of the Lord will protect you, least thou dash thy foot against a stone. Come on, go. Throw yourself off this mountain. And you know what Yeshua said? Put not the Lord thy God to a foolish test. Okay? Then the adversary went tamping with earthly power. Told him, If you would only bow down and worship me, I will make you a great king. I will make you ruler over the earth. And you know what Yeshua's reply was to him? My kingdom is not of this world. Hmm? Then he tells the, the dark one, Get thee behind me, Satan. And he will rebuke him. In other words, no, don't be in front of me. Get, get behind me. You yesterday's news, bro. Get to the back. Because I am going forward. Okay? So he was tempted, not only with worldly power, he was tempted to use the gifts of his own accord. And the devil went tell him, is it not written in the good book that the angels of the Lord will come and protect thee? At least thou dash thy foot against the stone. Je Jesus knew that. Yeshua knew that too. But he knew you do not use the gifts if it's not the will of the Father. So he was the embodiment of the Father. And the devil went tempt him. Because had he used the gifts without the, condone, the, the, the the sanction from above, he would have been doing his own righteousness. And the adversary would have gotten him like that. Would have, would have gotten him to work against the will, the divine will of the Creator. So you guys understand, this is heavy. This is heavy. But this requires spiritual consciousness. Because even when you get into the spiritual works, you're gonna be you're gonna be tempted and you're gonna be caused and and the best thing you can do is sit still and pull it. Stand in the, the standing in the holy place uh, is being still and praying. If you in doubt prayer, if you scared prayer, if you happy prayer, if you don't know what to do, prayer, be quiet, sit down and pull it. Because I'm gonna tell you this. The dark ones, the yes, yes, Kimmy, the fallen angels. They know, they know the word of God. Who in all the universe does not know the divine law? They know. And they did not want to conform to the divine law. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's why they were cast forth from the light. Okay? Yeah? They know. They, they, their origin was of the light. Who who do not who does not know? You know what I mean? So if you guys understood, when if you guys read that part in the scriptures about how Jesus was was, was meditating and he was tempted, you could understand too the kuliana of using the gifts. You never use it of your own accord. I don't care how good your intentions. Because good intentions is simply that good intentions. Unless it is divinely guided and orchestrated. Do not do it. Bad shit's gonna happen, man. When you do, when you do them. No, 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 for real kind. This is serious, okay? But and 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 they went, they went actually the dark one and actually throw it in Yeshua's face. Go back, you guys. Go read you guys scripture. Go really, really read that part good about the temptation of the Christ. That was one heavy part when you understand what would happen. He went up there to prayer to pull it. And he had this kepilo, this aikukai pilau, imp when go come over there for temp him. And the imp knew the word too. The imp, the sort of word imp would throw him in his face. Come on, throw yourself off this mountain. Use your power. Yeah, use your power. Because the scripture said the angels going to protect you. And that's when he said, put not the Lord thy God to a foolish test. Okay? Then at when, when he realized he couldn't tempt him for use spiritual power, he would try to tempt him with material power of the world. 
bow and worship me and I make you a great king in this world. All the nations of the earth are going to follow you. Yeah? And what was his reply? My kingdom is not of this earth. That's what his reply was. And then he said, then to finally rid himself of the, like, the capital, get thee behind me, Satan. Yeah? That's the Kuliana, people. That if even our elder brother Yeshua never used that, that divine mana without it being sanctioned from the Father. That's why he said, these things I do, I do because the Father has instructed me. That's the high pule. That's the high mana. Because when, the, 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 when you get the sanction from up there, the way down here open. But it's, it's, it's the value for this that I cannot stress and I cannot give to, 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 you, to people enough. And I, I sincerely believe that it would be wrong for me to push this on you. It's not, it's not porno, because not even the Father pushes himself on people. It's important that you come to a core of your own free will and of your own accord. Because God is not one to force you to love him. And neither does he tell you, if you don't, if you don't love me, I'm going to destroy you. What kind of love is that? God is pure love. God exists before time, in time, outside of time, in form, true form, out of form, and beyond. You know, God is love. And... This is part of learning the spiritual, the, the kuleana, of getting into any spiritual practice. Like I said, it's, it's important to have a basic foundation. And all of my spiritual ohana out there, you guys know, you guys know Akua. Yeah, I know you guys' families know, know God. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and not only from the waha, I mean, you know, and that's your first love. Remember your first love. That's your foundation. That's the foundation upon you. You build everything. Always recenter and go back to when you first heard about the love of God. Whether it was through your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandparents. Remember the first time you heard about, about Father God or about the love of God? That is your first love. Let that be your foundation upon which you build everything upon. So that no matter where you go, my mother used to tell us. My, mother, my mom never did stop us from going into anything or learning anything. But she always tell us. You put God before you. Because he can take you in. And he can bring you out. So it's in that that I leave you guys in light and life. Eternal. I love you guys with all my heart. But please, teach your children from a young age. Your nieces, your nephews, your mo'opuna, your grandchildren. If you can speak to them about the love of Akua. Share with them about the love of Akua. And, and teach them how to pull it. Teach them how to meditate. So that, they're not, so that they, they won't be one that will be caught off guard. They won't be one that will be caught off guard when these things happen. And then they have no basic foundation upon which to fall back upon. Give them a foundation. Give them one up. You know, it is taught in the scriptures that if you do not teach your children about God, you ruin their life. You parents ruin their life. If you don't give them the tools. Give them the tools, but never force them. Teach them the tools, but never force them. It's important that they come to a core of their own free accord. When they come of the age of accountability. When they know the difference between right and wrong. But if you do not even give them the tools, then how can they make informed decisions? How can they decide to choose to serve God or not? The, their love of Akua is not something that has to be forced on them. But you show them. And what you cannot teach them with words, you show them that love. But give them the tools, people, so that they can make an informed decision when they reach the age of accountability, when they know the difference between right and wrong. Then they can, of their own free will and of their own free accord of clear mind and clear heart, choose to serve God or not. That free will and that choice is very important to the Father. It is something that is very important. Because God is not one to force himself on anyone. God is love. And it's important that you give your children the tools, please. Don't send them into this world without the tools, people. 
Because things is coming. Things heavy is coming. And I'm seeing it affect people. I'm seeing it affect people that no one's raised in the word. And they come atheist people coming telling me I need help. And then how do I give them the value of it? When they have no foundation upon which to fall back upon. Then I tell them, I said, brother, it's not lifestyle change. You need to go and seek this path out. But I cannot make you, I cannot give you the value of it. I can only share with you my experiences. And should you choose to listen or not, that is your decision. But the fact that you are in dire straits now. And that you need this spiritual help. All I can say, all I can advise you now is to seek out this path. But I will not be one that will force this way upon you. Because everywhere in this world we go, we're being told what to do, how to believe, how to do this. You got to do this. You, you don't got to do nothing. God honors free will. And how can you, uh, you know, how would you feel if your husband told you, okay, or your wife told you, you better love me or I'm going to beat you. I'm going to kill you if you don't love me. That's not love. That's not the kind of love God used. That's not like I will comment on this. I will comment on how people use entrapment with the word of God. And that is not of the light. When they say things like, Oh, if you love God, click like. If you love Satan, pass this post on. That's no form of entrapment. That's not porno. God not do the kind. He don't use the kind of schemes to pull people in. He said, my sheep know my voice. He said, my sheep know my voice. You know, when you hear the words of Akua, you know, going to touch you deep in your heart. You guys ever been in a church where the minister is talking to thousands of people, but the Holy Spirit is so powerful that you feel like that minister is talking directly to you. And you, you, you're being convicted. That's what they call conviction of the spirit. When you feel like, oh my God, is this guy talking to me or what? And get thousands of people there and feel like the message was catered directly to you. As if that whole guy, out of all the billions of people there, he was talking directly to you. People, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. And that's being convicted in the spirit. When, when you feel that presence, like God himself, you have an audience with the Creator and the God Himself is talking directly with you. Please, teach your children. If somebody invites you for come, come with me, go. Go check them out. You could know if it's right for you or not. But please, teach your children so that they don't need to come or go look for somebody to help them when they in dire straits because this is coming this energy is coming and in addition to what's going on there's, there's plenty and I will talk about the portals that was opening not only here but also on and I, I saw a lot down Pune but it's all being closed now all being purified now by the fire it's purifying all everything okay but teach your children. Give them the tools. No send no no leave them defenseless. Teach your children. Take the time out. Talk to them. When you're laying down, talk to them about the love of Akua. Okay? I love you, Ohana. God bless you guys. I pray this message finds you guys in light and life eternal. Aloha. I love you guys.